Previously on Four Priests Brewery. Right, let's take a look at the spring situation in here. Um, I've got all the screws out the top and the front. I'm going to spin around. Get them out the back as well. Ooh, a few sticky dribbles around there. I'm hoping it's uh, off the shelf-ish kind of spring, but <laughs> knowing my look, it won't be. So when I was using this last time, just happily pushing away and pulling away, doink, and uh, the handle dropped back into the, the backward most position. Um, and I could carry on, I just had to be careful inserting the cans, but clearly it's not designed to be done that way, it needs to be clear of the, of the dies. I don't know what they're called, dies, the tool heads anyway. I'll show you inside when we get the when we get the cover off. Right. That should be enough now. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay. Let me show you. So normally the can goes in, we place the lid. This has already been seamed, obviously. We place the lid on top. And if you look, normally in the halfway position, this roller and this roller are clear of the can when it lifts. It meets, the, meets the, the holder, and then as we push, this wheel crimps the top of the can over, and then we pull, and this wheel finishes it off, as this is rotating at a high speed. But at the moment, because a spring is broken, which I'll show you in a second, this one's already touching. So as we push up, we're pushing into that wheel already, um, which uh, means it's not necessarily going to be as precise as we need. So, why is that, you ask? Right, can you see that spring there? As I pull the handle towards me, it's stretching, and that's what pulls the handle to the back. But it should be counterbalanced by a spring this side, which currently is just hanging loose. That one should be attached. That one should be attached to this side, and it ain't. So I'm just gonna get that off, I might take the other one off as well because I'm assuming they're identical uh, and then we can measure up and work out what to do. Ah, there we go. There you go. If you see, there's a ring where I'm holding it. It should be the same the other end, but it's kind of snapped off. Oh dear. Right, not sure if you can see that or not, but I've uh, just bent a new loop into the end of the spring and it's sort of holding, so it's a temporary fix. I'm gonna leave the cover off um, so I can give it a good clean inside and just adjust some of these stops as well, make sure that it's uh, where it should be. Right, next up, let's get these new hoses into the duo filler. Fingers crossed, that will work too. Right, so we're just giving it a bit of a clean down there. Um, we've got the input hose connector on a little gasket. They go on the outside. Thread that up through there. Drop on the lock nut. And tighten up the lock nut. Doesn't need to be over tight, just uh, enough to hold it in place a little. Just 
give it a little spin till it bites. That'll do. And then, um, I'm not sure if it'll click in, but no, it won't. We might need to power it so that we can uh, click in the actuator just to get the hose in a little bit easier. It's only low voltage, so I don't have a big issue with that. Um, just got to find the right cable for it now, unfortunately. Oh, that's that one. So we've pressed it. It thinks it's um, purging at the moment. Right, now it thinks it's filling. So we can just push this actuator. There you go, it clicks open. And uh, it will should stay open for quite a while. And we can just pinch this hose and squeeze it in until it's in position. There you go. That's in. Make sure it's not kinked or puckered or anything. That's in. And then we can thread out of the top. Actually, I remember last time it's easier to pop these grommets out and then uh, thread them back down again. So we can thread this hose out of the top. Actually, we'll unplug it as well, just in case. No point messing around, even though it's only 12 volts. Just uh, avoids any short circuits and whatnot. That can go out the top there. And we'll squish the grommet back on. And then push the grommet back into the hole. With a little bit of gentle persuasion from the screwdriver. There you go, we're in. So. That's on, that's in the right place. And over the top, and we'll do the same on the other half now as well. That's the gas tube for that one. So, uh... hello, Michael. Oh. You all right, mind your head. I took your recording, sorry. It's all right. Okay, that's the second one in, and then we'll do the same and just Get it into a state where we can click the uh, click the actuator in on the solenoids. So these solenoids are normally pinched shut when a current is applied or power is applied. It doesn't pop open. It allows um, it allows the pressure of the beer in the pipe to click this actuator in, um, just using the the pressure of the, of the liquid. So. Let's do the same again. It thinks it's purging. We'll wait for the light to change colour. And then, once it starts, right, now we can click that in. There you go. And now this gap here is clear, so we can pop the pipe back in carefully, making sure it's not impeded in any way. There's probably a better way. Stig, if you're watching. Um, I, can't, I can't work it out, though. They certainly don't thread in very easily. So I'm quite impressed with this. It's dead simple, but there's, there's two really small little features um, on it, which uh, I'm very impressed with. I wasn't expecting to see this inside. So the gas comes in here, it's separated into two. One for the left side, one for the right side. Uh, and these little valves here are electrically operated. When I press start, it allows the gas to flow down this hose, purge the can, blow out all the air, for a predetermined time. In my uh, situation, I've selected six seconds. And then the signal sent to stop, it stops, closes the flow of gas, uh, and the beer can then start to flow. But we've got this extra little pipe on the top, this little hose on both of them. And they actually go to, I'll show you a close up, these go to pressure sensors on the PCB. So how it's actually detecting that the can's full is it's reading the pressure of the back pressure, if you like, through this hose from the weight of beer in the can. There's a small amount of pressure which goes back into the body of the, of the sensor and it's reading that pressure. And then obviously it does a calculation inside and says X millimeters needs to be Y bar. And we've reached that level, so stop. Um, yeah, very smart. I, I thought maybe they did it, they'd done it electrically through resistance between the two hoses, but then there's, there's no electrical connection. They're just rubber, so. Obviously, that was not going to be the case. You can set it with time also, but 
that's very variable depending on the pressure you're pushing the beer in with. Uh, if it's, there's more pressure, it's, it's going to fill faster. So it just avoids constantly re, um, readjusting the, 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 uh, the settings. Um, so the can's purged, the beer then starts to flow, and that, you've seen how these work. So these little solenoids, the, again, the, the, ga the beer is on these two pipes, and it's always present, but it, the, the flow is stopped by the pinch inside this and this solenoid. Um, so we then power, or I'm not sure which way around these work, power or remove the power from, um, from the solenoid, which then allows the pressure of the gas to push through, and that then clicks the pin in and allows the beer to flow. And then again, once the reading says the can's full, it will pinch closed again, um, and the flow stops. Very smart. Um, little antenna on the top here. This is for connection to the Wi-Fi um, for the app so that you can change the settings uh, on your phone, etc. And they've not gone for a fancy, expensive antenna to keep the costs down. They've basically got a bit of heat shrink and what looks like a stripped coaxial cable of some sort. Um, so yeah, smart, keeps the cost under control. Um, not a lot of waterproofing going on in here. I've got to say, um, I mean, most of it runs down the front and off, so it's away. But there's a few little holes and places where you could get some ingress of liquid, so I'll have to watch that. The board's spaced off the case, so if it runs down the back panel, um, we've got these standoffs to bring the circuit board forward. So uh, any drainage holes in the bottom? No, but it's the seam there is quite open, so any liquid could, could just leak out. So not too concerned about that anyway. We're, we're just careful with it. So we'll get the lid back on and then give it a whirl, see if it works. Thursday evening, back at the brewery, uh, just doing a few little bits. I'm going to get home, uh, just knocked off work and come straight down. Um, currently transferring the experimental brew. Um, I've taken the, uh, one of the caps off, off the top of the lid. I'm just using gravity to uh, drain that into a 30 litre poly keg through the coupler, through the dip tube. Uh, it's been purged, obviously, they, they're supplied purged. Um, and uh, just unscrewed the other side so it's just pushing this residual co2 out as it's replaced with beer inside i should almost get a full keg uh, maybe not quite but we can top the rest off with gas and then get that carbonated ready to go into ready to go into cans um too cold to do anything else honestly it's you know the sanitizer in the airlock there has frozen everything's frozen again um, which also means I can't really take that off the wall because it's all going to be frozen together. So um, Saturday's brew is looking a bit iffy unless things warm up a little bit. We shall see. Next, just going to take one of these home. Um, again, carbonating with variable temperature. So, you know, we've gone from probably plus 10, plus 12 degrees down to minus 7 right now. And um, the amount of CO2 which will diffuse into the beer is going to be widely variable. Um, we're currently at somewhere around 14-ish PSI, I think that is, um, which is fine for a given temperature, as you can see on here. I don't know if you can read that or not, but you know, at, at 10, 11, 12 degrees, let's say 12 degrees, to get carbonation of 2.6 volumes, because we lose a bit during canning, um, I need uh, 22 psi but you know down at four degrees I only need 13 psi I'm 14 psi and it's definitely been colder than five so you know I'm up here somewhere um, so we'll get one of these off take it home have a little test to drink um, and uh, see how see how the carbonation is Right, here we are back at home. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen the Smegerator before, say hello to the Smegerator. Um, 50 quid, what a purchase. 
it wasn't working it was all iced up so um had a little fiddle with it got it back into action and then uh, stuck these stuck four of these um cmb cm becker taps on the front which have got flow control to deal with the foamage and whatnot um however there's only one keg in it at the moment which is the 30 litre poly keg that i've just borrowed from the brewery i want some hops as well um so we'll just set up here i've done i've had a little test already but i'll just set you down here and you can you can have a look but it's basically a bit flat still it's either not had not enough time on the gas or the pressure's a bit low um the clarity's good it's like a nice drink but unfortunately don't let the bubbles deceive you it's because the tap's a bit fast at 25 psi or whatever i put it on at the moment um it definitely needs another few days i'd say it's probably 1.8 volumes ish a bit more than a bit more than cask but definitely not not gassy enough to uh, to deliver to a pub so we'll get that fixed on this one and then i'll uh, reproduce those settings back at the brewery so uh, we're all carved up and ready to go oh ping i think that's my chinese takeaway delivery on its way it's now Sunday, and no, I didn't manage to get a brew on yesterday. It, it had just got above freezing, but all the everything was still frozen. So the pipes going into the building, you could hear the ice sliding along inside them. Um, so I just bailed on that idea and spent the day doing some maintenance instead. Um, as an example of what the cold weather's doing, you see the split there. This is the main incoming supply into the building. We turn this on and off every time we leave, but it was on the water comes in this side so it was before the ball uh, valve inside so if that had have defrosted fully we'd have had a big flood on our hands unfortunately so we gonna have to really keep an eye on that a few of these failed in the same way the body's just split um so i need to drain down properly but i just don't look at the weather forecast often enough honestly and that's your lot for this week. We will be back next week to brew Murgy Strait. Subject to weather, I think it's going to be okay. I've got to brew anyway, somehow. We've got to find a way because we're down to about nine casks now. So that's the point we normally need to uh, get it brewed again at the latest. Um, the test beers now in keg, as you saw. So that's carbonating. We'll get those into cans. And anything else that happens, we'll let you know next time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.